Welcome to the overview of the PAS Music film scoring template for Dorico. This is the template that's available on the PAS Music website and has been extensively field tested with live orchestras and used by my film scoring students as well as professional film composers and orchestrators. And it's the template that I use in all of my professional scoring and orchestration work. I've created this template to follow modern scoring conventions for media used in studios throughout the world. Every possible consideration has been made for font sizes, page layouts, notation options, engraving options, line weights, and everything in between. First, let's just make a quick visual comparison between the stock film template that ships with Dorico and my own. The stock template is a great starting point, but there are tons of smaller details that need to be adjusted to get things looking as professional as possible. Right off the bat, you can see some of the layout differences between my template and the stock template, but let's look at some of the smaller details. As you can see on my template, the score is set up to be conducive to a multi-cue recording session. Let's take a look at the labels. Almost everything on the page uses the project info window. So if you want to change something, just head over to project info. Here you can change the title, the subtitle, composer, orchestrator, the copyist initials, the copyright info, and the project name. The location of these labels on the score makes it much easier to keep track of a multi-cue project and make everything visually consistent. You can see time and date indicators at the bottom of every page that update automatically every time you save the project. This makes sure that your team always has the most recent version of the score. Time signatures are tall and thin, as is the standard on studio scores, but they're not so big that they get in the way. You'll also notice that they show up on each section, the woodwinds, brass, percussion, and strings, and they align to the top of each section. This helps conductors quickly and easily locate meter changes on the page. Another essential adjustment that's been made in the font department on this template is how big the text is for system objects. A lot of times I see people prepare scores with tiny tempo indications or system text. That makes it really difficult for the conductor to read from a distance. In this template, the tempo changes in system text are big enough to easily be read from the podium. When putting together something that's meant to be read, like a score, you need to consider the person who's going to be reading it. Text size is one of those considerations that helps out immensely. Now as far as bar numbers go, I still see scores all the time that have tiny bar numbers somewhere on the page. On this template, the bar numbers are large and they have their own lane to run in above the strings. I've created a couple of clever guidelines that you can add as instruments on the score if needed. Now, bar numbers appearing above the strings can definitely be a personal preference. Some people prefer to have bar numbers appear below the score. In that case, just hop over to Layout Options, Bar Numbers, Placement, Placement Relative to System, and then check Show Below Bottom Staff of System. Now, if you do that, I've found that the optimal spacing for bar numbers under the staff in this template is five spaces. Once you do that, remember to remove the guidelines from the score. One standard in media scoring is to show four bars per page. That's not a hard and fast rule, but I definitely recommend keeping it between four and eight bars. In this template, the default is set to four bars per page, but you can always change that. One of the best features in Dorico is the way that it handles condensing on a full score. The custom condensing groups in this template have been set to follow the most standard layouts for a large orchestra. Of course, these can be changed to fit your preferences, but this is the kind of standard three winds orchestra layout. The third wind player is the doubling instrument in this template, so they get their own line. With condensing in this template, many changes have been made to how the staff labels appear. The instrument name justifies to the middle, and the player numbers stack vertically. This is the most common way to lay out the staff labels, because it allows someone to quickly scan down the score to find a line. On the score, only the active instrument shows at the start of the system. So if flute 3 is the active player, that's what shows on the score. But if they're currently on piccolo, that's what will show at the start of the system. It's a great feature from Dorico. Another thing that I love is how Dorico handles unison and divisi writing with condensed instruments. Dorico makes you think about each individual player, not just the paper document that you're creating. 
So if you want two flutes to play the same line, you have to write it for both flutes. I've found that this greatly reduces errors in notation for unison passages in the woodwinds and brass. You have to physically write the music that you want each individual player to play. Then Dorico handles the rest by marking A2, A3, etc. It truly is one of my favorite things about Dorico. Okay, score and part preparation for percussion can be a little bit crazy sometimes. I've spent tons of time refining how this template handles percussion parts and I've got it down to something that I'm pretty happy with at least for a starting point when I start new projects. The way that I've displayed percussion on the score is by using percussion kits. I've got one for metals, one for drums, and then a pitched percussion player. This way the percussion is notated on a five line stave instead of individual lines for each percussion instrument. That can be a personal preference for notation but it's how I prefer to work with percussion in my studio scores. The beauty of how I've put together percussion in this template is how it displays on the part. Whatever you write for percussion on the score will be displayed on a single part that includes unpitched and pitched percussion. The only thing you need to make sure to do is to label your parts for the benefit of the percussion players. Now, one of the shining features of this template is the excellent part layout. First of all, the project info on the parts very closely reflects the score. Also, tons of considerations have been made to make this music as readable as possible for musicians in the studio. I've seen real-world situations where someone has written a great cue, but due to bad part layout or poor engraving, the performance was nowhere near what it should have been. Readability can make or break a session. Because of that, you'll notice that time signatures on parts are nice and large. Additionally, system text and tempo changes are bold and large. The staff size, staff line weight, and note stem weight have been carefully selected for optimized readability. I have parts set to display eight staves per page and four bars per system. Again, you can fit more than four bars on one line, but I set this as a starting point to help the music breathe even before you begin your engraving process. One thing you'll notice in the page layout template for parts is how I made the layout name truly reflect the layout name instead of the player or instrument names. That way you can change the name of the layout independently of the instrument names. For instance, I prefer to have my layout names in all caps, but I don't want that on the score. So I can change my layout name independently and it works really well. Lastly, I've set the parts to fill the rest of the page with blank staves. This is really common in studio sessions, just in case something is dictated from the podium. The extra staves on the page give musicians the opportunity to pencil in their own notes if needed. I've carefully selected the font choices for this template. The main text font is Times New Roman, a very common, standard, and easy to read font. The music font for this template is Finale Maestro. Again, this is a personal preference, but this is the font used by many leading music preparation houses in media music. All fonts used in this template that don't ship with Dorico are included in your purchase of the template. When you're working on several cues with the same orchestra, there's bound to be a time when somebody isn't playing. In that case, a tacit sheet is necessary so that they at least have a placeholder on their stand for that cue. I've devised my own custom way of creating tacit sheets, which I personally thought was pretty clever. And I've even created a custom page template for tacits to make it a quick process. First of all, let's look at the full score. If you want to show a tacit on the full score, I've created my own custom tacit indicator that uses the repeating line tool. Let's say that the synthesizer doesn't play on this cue. Click on a bar and add your tacit line. The process for creating a tacit sheet for an individual part couldn't be easier. Simply go to your part, go to engrave mode, and change the page template to tacit sheet. I've created this custom page template to handle everything for you. Now, not only does a tacit show on the full score, but a tacit sheet is easily created for the player while still retaining a full page of blank staves.
The page sizes I've set for this template are US sizes. Tabloid, or 11 by 17, for scores, and 9 by 12 for parts. I've set the naming formula for exporting PDFs as layout number, project title, and layout name. This is a lifesaver when working with separate queues. It automatically sorts the files into score order. Your orchestra librarian will thank you. And that's about it. There are tons of little settings and adjustments that I make month after month as I keep the template optimized, but these are some of the main features that I wanted to cover for you. If you haven't already, you can pick up your copy of this template over at my website. Everyone who buys the template gets free updates for life and support for all future versions of Dorico. Whenever Dorico adds a great new feature that works well for this template, it gets added and passed along to all previous customers. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this overview useful. See you next time.